Okay guys, we need to have a serious discussion here. The waters off the west coast of Canada offer some of the best temperate diving in the world because of its abundance in marine life. So when you go diving here, you can see things like sea lions and Puget Sound king crabs and cool jellyfish and like so many types of nudibranchs and giant Pacific octopus and squid, schools of rockfish, big ling cod. But yet, what does every single diver want to see? Lobsuckers. Every time. Why? Why? The Pacific spiny lump sucker is a globular shaped fish that honestly just looks like a small golf ball with short fins. The marine life of the Pacific Northwest book refers to them as an out of shape fin couch potato. <laughs> they can reach up to 7 inches in length, but most of them are just about an inch long, kind of like the size of a big grape. Females are pale green, whereas males are more of a dull orange to reddish brown purple-ish. Unlike most other fish species, they actually don't have any scales. Instead, their body is covered with plate-like structures containing spiny lumps called tubercles. And for whatever reason, females have more tubercles than males. They really look like cartoons with their big lips and their large protruding blue eyes. They're really clumsy, ineffective swimmers because of their awkward shape, so luckily their pelvic fins have evolved into a large suction cup, and this allows them to attach the surfaces so they don't get swept away by strong currents. They live in a wide range of habitats where they are usually attached to solid objects with their suction cups. Habitats include things like eelgrass beds or rocky areas with kelp or other algae growth. They're also found in shallow bays and around docks. They can be found in shallow near shore waters, like most of these that we found, or as deep as 150 meters. Because they are such ineffective swimmers, they strongly rely on camouflage to avoid being detected by predators such as Pacific Cod, Sablefish, and Lancefish. They often use rocks and seaweed as hiding places. This might be one of the reasons why divers are so obsessed with lump suckers. I mean, maybe they feel a sense of accomplishment when they finally find one of these tiny elusive creatures? Who knows? Lump suckers spawn in shallow waters from July to October. The females lay orange-colored eggs in sheltered depressions in rocks. The females will typically lay around 200 eggs at a time, and after the eggs are laid, the male becomes the caregiver of the eggs for the next three to eight weeks until they hatch. So he'll attach himself to the rocky surface surrounding the eggs where he aerates them by waving water over them with his fins to supply them with oxygen. He apparently also protects them from predators such as crabs, starfish, and small fish. Um, I don't know how this useless tiny fish would ever be able to fight off a crab, but apparently that's a thing that they do. How is this species even still alive? It just seems so useless at everything. <laughs> They don't seem too scared of divers. Sometimes they'll actually swim right up to your mask. I have a feeling that this is because during night dives, our lights attract clouds of mice and shrimp, which the lump suckers tried to eat. Keyword, try. <laughs> Their diet consists of crustaceans such as krill and mycid shrimp, amphipods, polychaete worms, and bivalve mollusks that are found in the sandy or muddy bottoms. Thank you.
Their conservation status is unknown at this point because they haven't been evaluated by the International Union for Conservation of Nature or the IUCN. And given that these fish rely on eelgrass for habitat and breed in shallow waters, they may be vulnerable to increases in water temperature resulting from climate change, but we're not really sure, so further studies are needed for this. Okay, fine. They are pretty cute. <laughs> I guess I get it. 